Good morning. It's Monday, October 14th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Plans I Have for You, and our scripture is Jeremiah chapter 29. This is what the Lord says, You will be in Babylon for seventy years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I've promised, and I will bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. Isn't it strange when people ignore reality in favor of constructing a fantasy world? We'd be on safe ground to say that we've all done that, ignoring the context of a statement or circumstance to create a better outcome in our minds anyway. You ignore where the decimal point falls in your bank account, you go ahead and buy that yacht anyway. We plow ahead ignoring the sign that says bridge out. In the hopefulness of youth or foolishness of old age, we ignore reality and cannot imagine what we want is beyond our reach. Jeremiah's retelling of God's message that God's plans for us are good and not disaster is unfortunately misused in this way. I've seen that statement written on more Bibles presented to young people each June as they graduated from high school or college. Taken out of context, it reinforces the tripe passed along from generation to generation that, quote, you can be anything you want to be. It's a well-meaning sentiment, but it can put a young mind on the wrong pathway by just a few degrees. Given time, a few degrees wrong in direction can mean missing the goal by universe. So, what's the problem? Well, consider where Jeremiah was and where the people of Israel were. The prophet was in jail, and the people were worse off. A thousand miles from home in Jerusalem, they were in Babylon. Their armies had been defeated, land and all property confiscated, Families pulled apart and exiled like so many relocation camps. And their God in heaven, well, he was silent. He allowed Nebuchadnezzar's stormtroopers to dismantle the city's walls and desecrate the temple. Everything was in ruins. Does that sound like only good plans for you? (laughs) And Jeremiah says that God said, all my plans for you are good. What? Therein is the contextual heresy of those graduation Bible inscriptions. They send the message that life will be a bed of roses if you just identify as a God follower, go to church several times a year, and don't get caught embezzling, murdering, or cheating on your taxes. That was Israel, and who are we to say America is much different? Without the context of Israel's captivity, slaughter, and grief, we're left with a terrible theology of a God who's like a vending machine. All you have to do is show up occasionally, throw a little money in the slot, you know, the offering plate, and you're good to go. You're going to be blessed with your best life ever. That is so spiritually blind, it isn't laughable. The plain fact remains that God is the one who caused the Babylonian dictator Nebuchadnezzar to succeed in his siege against the fortress of Jerusalem and conquer God's people. How's that for plans that are only good? From current day perspective, we know that God orchestrated Israel's humiliation and troubles for the purpose of disciplining them which was meant to bring them back to the reality that they'd gotten off course in being faithful to him. It's the equivalent of what parents used to do in spanking their children, get their attention. Bottom line, there's a whole generation or two that knows nothing of accountability. And considering that a genuine faith walk with God in Jesus Christ is entirely about accountability, it's no wonder children who aren't accustomed to any kind of discipline or even hearing the word no go off the reservation when it comes to faith. 
for you today. It's often said that if there's breath, there's hope. I believe that. I also believe where there's hope, there's also possibility. It is possible to reverse the post-Christian wave of hedonism we see in our culture these days. But it's going to take a hard look at reality and a hard pull on the wheel of our lives to get back on course. Start with telling the truth and not ignoring what's eternal. That's a course correction essential. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.